And so today, the topic of the day is fact versus feelings and the detrimental impact that this can have on us. And the reason I want to share this with you today, because it's come up a couple of times this week in two very different situations. The first is with a, um, a, a client of mine, an observation that I have made, which is um, directly impacting him and having a detrimental effect on, on where he's at right now. And also it came up in a conversation on a podcast interview that we recorded this week um, where my guests um, refer to it in this way, fact versus feeling. And I thought, I like that. I like that, that phrase. And it related to the same topic that I'm going to discuss today. So for me, fact versus feeling and how this lack of distinction can hold us back in both our life and in our career. So what do I mean by this? Well, here's the thing. Often we allow the feelings that we experience to define our reality of any given situation. In other words, our emotions have us feeling a certain way. And this directly influences both our beliefs and as a consequence, the lens through which we are viewing the world. So let me ask you a question. What is your view of the world? And why is it so? Give some thought to this. Could particularly if, for example, if you're unhappy, you're frustrated, maybe you're, you're currently feeling like you're in a bad place, perhaps you're not being treated right, whether it's personally or it's in your um, career, so professionally, perhaps the situation you're in right now is causing you stress or it's causing you resentment, perhaps a feeling of not being good enough or not being... Um, likes being as popular as you would like to be or being known for the right reason so it could be a number of reasons the list is inordinate and and so there might be something going on for you whether it's personal or professional where it's having a negative effect on you and therefore it's impacting how you're feeling of course because that is natural so here's the thing if that's you today you're in the right place because today i'll be discussing this and sharing some tips that you can embrace so that you may wake up tomorrow feeling even better than you are today. And yes, that is possible. It's not a magic pill. It does take some work. It does take some effort, but it is very, very powerful. So I in invite you, first of all, to, to consider this. Take time to stop. First of all, you want to just create some space and then tune in to how you are feeling. Because, as you know, we are all busy all the time, running around with a number of obligations, whether it's our work commitments, our family commitments. And we don't often take the time to just stop and really tune into how we are feeling. So this is the first thing that I would invite you to do. So check in to your emotions, get, get um, present with how you're feeling and identify the emotions. What, what are the feelings that are coming up for you and where are they showing up in your body? And then think about, okay, how, and be objective about this question. When you ask yourself, how is this, how are these emotions, these feelings influencing your current view of your situation, your predicament, your circumstances, or even another person? So let's say you're having some challenges with somebody else. Maybe you're not getting on. Something is not working well. Think about it from your perspective, because we want to focus on what it is that we can influence and what it is that we can control. So consider what is it that's influencing how you're feeling right now and the, and the, and the um, current view that you're having as a consequence on the situation, or the circumstance around you. And then I want you to consider the facts of the situation, because right now we're talking about the feelings, the emotions that are coming up and oftentimes so I'll give an example. Um, so let's say an example is you've you, you're not in work, so maybe you've been made redundant and or you've been a contractor and the contract's coming to an end and it wasn't renewed and now you're looking for your next role. So what emotions will come up for you? How are you feeling about that? And then start to think about, okay, first of all, are these feelings assisting me? Are they helping me to move forward? Are they serving me? Or in fact, are they making the situation even worse? And this is what I mean by stopping and reflecting 
and getting present to how the way that you're feeling is actually impacting the situation and the way that you see it. So if we take the example of looking for work and you're not working at the moment for, for whatever reason that might be, you might have taken a break, um, you might have been made redundant. As I said, you might have been a contractor and the contract's not been renewed. So now you're in the in the um, job search place, okay? And so as a consequence, maybe there's some, some panic, there's some stress because you don't have that regular income. You don't know how long it's going to take to get in the next role. You know, you're applying for jobs, you're not getting responses a lot of the time, and it can become really frustrating. It can become, um, you can start to panic, to get stressed, not being able to sleep. There's so many things that this will impact. So what is it you can do to take control of the situation, to influence it in a better way, that you show up more productively and more effectively to be able to move forward and to have a better experience. So get present to the emotions that you're having and how that is influencing the situation. Because oftentimes, and I'm sure you'll have heard before, when we're in a bad place or when we when something's not gone well, typically what happens is everything else starts to fall over as well. Oftentimes, one thing doesn't work and then we have often, we hear about the saying of three things have happened. Um, it couldn't get any worse. You know, hopefully things are going to change for us. So what is it that's going on? And what is it that you want to check to experience the change in? Get clear on what is it you want rather than focusing on what you don't want. Think about, OK, what are the facts of the situation? So if we use the example of the um, being in the job market and okay so what are the facts here right i'm not in work it's been however many days or weeks that you've not worked and therefore you've got to manage your financial situation you also want to manage yourself and this is what today's about it's about managing you because right now if you're in a situation where you need to, to secure the next role you want to be showing up as your best self okay and your best self is not someone who has a lot of negative emotion going on. Now, it's not to say that you don't show yourself some compassion. However, if you show up to an interview, let's say, and um, you're feeling really stressed, almost desperate because you need to get a job and you're panicking, you're not gonna perform well. Would you agree with me, yes or no? We need to learn to manage our state and that's what this, topic today is about. So think about the facts of the situation, because oftentimes we allow our emotions, our feelings to drag us down, particularly when we're in a bad place, when we've got something that's not going well. And it then starts to impact everything else around us. But the biggest thing it impacts is you and the way that you're showing up. And if you're in a situation, as I said, where maybe you're looking to secure a new role, you want to be showing up as your best self. So ask yourself, what is it that you've tried that hasn't worked? And then ask yourself, what is it you could do better or what you could do even better than you're already doing? And also stop and reflect on how are you showing up right now? So thinking about what I just shared there about the way that our emotions directly influence the way that we show up. And if it's negative, if it's negative emotions, then oftentimes what will happen, people will pick up on it. So if, if we're in a situation where maybe we are um, starting to panic or we're desperate and we really need that next job, people are going to pick that up. It's a bit like sales. If you're trying to sell something to somebody and you're coming from a place of desperation or from scarcity or from lack and you have to make that sale because you need the money to pay the bills or, or whatever the situation is, people will smell that. They will sense that something's not right and they will be put off. And it's the same in sales as it is in selling yourself into an interview to get a new role. So you want to be mindful of how you're coming across to others and what other people may likely pick up from your state in the way that you're showing up and how you can manage that. Therefore, is by tuning in to your feelings, to your emotions and actually rationalizing them a little bit and thinking, OK, what are the facts here? What is the situation? Are we making assumptions because we're not feeling in a good place or because somebody has said something to upset us or annoy us or frustrate us or undermine us? 
And now, because we're upset or angry or frustrated with that, it's now reflecting on the way that we're showing up and impacting what we're doing. So it could be our day-to-day -day work, conversation that we're having with someone. So this is a huge topic, by the way, and it, there's so many um, consequences to this if we don't get this handled. So taking the time to stop, to slow down, to tune in to being present with your feelings, your emotions, and being honest with yourself and asking yourself, how is having these feelings and these emotions actually serving me? How is it helping me to move forward and to get to what I want or where I want to be? Think about the facts of the situation. What are the actual facts here? What's really, really going on versus the emotional part of this? Yeah, because we, we tend to start to become a little bit irrational in the way that we view things, view situations when we're not in a good place. And they typically will look worse than they really are. So that's why we want to take the emotion out of it for a second, deal with the facts and say, right, what is it now I need to be doing? So the big question here is, how are you showing up? And what is it you can do differently today that can create a different outcome or a different experience for you? And again, this relates to how you're showing up to the conversations that you're having, to the outlook that you're having on the situation at hand. And then think about, okay, how are you perhaps making the situation even worse in your eyes simply because of the lens that you are looking through? In other words, this bit is about taking responsibility. So rather than saying, well, it's because the, the person that interviewed me wasn't, wasn't really present or they weren't really paying attention, they didn't seem that interested, don't blame that. What is it that you can do? Because you can't control that situation. You can't control other people. What you can do is you can control and influence yourself and how you were showing up. And by doing so, you'll get a much, much better experience and a better result. So ask yourself, how are you making the situation worse in your own eyes by the way that you're showing up, by the emotions that you're experiencing right now and, and the lens that you're looking through? So your perception and an example of this is I'll give you a simple example is the weather. OK, so we wake up in the morning and it's pouring down with rain and we've got to walk down the road to the tube station to catch the train to go to work, let's say. And it puts you in a bad mood because, first of all, it's raining. It might be cold and windy. You're going to get drenched. Your hair's going to not look as great as you'd like it to. You know, by the time you get to work, you're maybe feeling frustrated. You're soaking wet, you're cold. And naturally, the go to thought process and therefore the emotions are you're feeling frustrated it's like oh, I'm gonna have a bad day couldn't get any worse because I've gotten in my hair's gone frizzy I'm soaked through I'm gonna be cold until my clothes dry off and etc 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 so we're now creating that experience because of the thoughts that we're having and what we are focusing on we can't control the weather the weather is what it is we all know that and actually I once heard someone say there was no such thing as bad weather it's a bad dress. If you're not dressed appropriately for the weather, then it's it's, it's your fault, not the weather's fault. Um, so that just requires a bit of planning and foresight, but actually hoping that the weather report is accurate as well. So the point being here, we want to be aware of what we focus on because we create even more of what we choose to focus on. So if we're focusing on all the things that are going wrong, the things aren't going to plan or not well, or something's not what we expected, we didn't get the result we wanted, or somebody um, didn't say or do what we had hoped, and we focus on it and we spend time on it, we're gonna create more of the same force. We're gonna just start to see more of the same. And a big, um, a big uh, tool I'd say we can use here, um, which, Sometimes if you've not done it before, it's like, well, why is that going to help me? I've, and I've had this said, it's like, well, I don't see the point. It's not going to work. But here's the thing. This is this is a huge deal. It's practicing gratitude. And when I talk about practicing gratitude, really feeling in to the things that you are grateful for. Because here's the thing. When we focus on what is good in our lives and the things that make us feel happy, our brain can't at the same time then be focusing on the negative emotions that when we're experiencing happiness and contentment, we can't then at the same time experience anger and frustration. So by 
reprogramming our neural pathways to focus and see the good and a way of doing this is by practicing gratitude this is a great way to start and doing it on a daily basis doing it whether it's first thing in the morning or last thing at night i tend to do it more often in the evenings because it's a way of reflecting on my day and how well it's gone and here's the thing we all naturally as human beings we tend to focus on the things that haven't worked the things that went wrong I'm guilty of it and I'm sure you are too. Let me know if this resonates with you in the comments. And I can give you an example where, you know, I delivered a talk. This was a few years ago and I delivered a talk and I had, there was, I think, 50 people or so in the room. I had great feedback from most of the people in the room, so about 40, 45 people. And then there were about two or three people who shared some negative feedback, some criticism of, of the way they seen what I had done, what I talked about, etc. And instead of me focusing on all of the good stuff and all the positive feedback I received, I took on board these couple of comments. It really upset me. It made me start questioning what I do, questioning my content, questioning my ability to be a public speaker. All of us, are, we are all guilty of it. I am no exception. So we've all been there. The thing is, when you develop your self-awareness, which is part of what I'm sharing with you today, by tuning into your emotions, how you're feeling, what's causing that, what's triggering that, and then questioning is what's questioning, sorry, what's um, creating that? Is it um, your, is it a fact or is it fee, is it thoughts, sorry, is it thoughts that you're having that's creating those feelings? And those thoughts and beliefs may not even be true. But we're building them up in our own mind in the same way that I did in that example of like, oh, you know, maybe I'm, I'm doing the wrong thing. Maybe I shouldn't be a speaker. You know, maybe my content's not good enough and so forth. And it goes on and on and on. And it was only when um, at the time my and I was devastated, by the way. OK, I was absolutely devastated. And then my partner just said, well, well what about the 40 something people who wanted to connect with you, who gave you good feedback, who were really inspired? And I was like. Oh, yeah, I forgot about them because I was so focused on these two or three people who had not been happy with it. And the thing is, and you may have heard me talk about this before, is that everyone judges. Everybody has an opinion. OK, and it's about learning to let go of that and recognizing that. As there's a quote that I've seen that says, unless they're paying your bills, others opinions don't matter. So this is where I, I talk about being um, present with your own feelings and what it is you can do to influence them in a better way. Thank you, Naya, for joining. I hope this has been good for you and helpful. Um, you need to jump off. It'll catch up via the recording later. Fantastic. <laughs> Glad to know that it resonates. Thank you. And I'll speak to you soon. So, yeah, when I when I talk about this, it, it's about a number of things it's becoming self-aware of what's going on for us and what it is we can do differently to create a better experience for us it's about understanding the lens that we are seeing things through because when we're in a bad place and we look at everything from that place it will look 10 times worse than it really is and going back to my example of um, being in the job market and maybe you're in a situation where you're really stressed panicked desperate even um, because of whatever the implications are, whether it's financial or it's around, you know, you're the provider for the home, the family, and it's that's your role and, and you're not being able to do that and fulfill that. It could be a number of things going on, right, which causes all of that negative um, energy, the, the negative emotions. What is it you can do with that is, is by switching it around and tuning into, OK, let's let go of the emotion for a second. What is it I can do? Let's be rational about this. And how am I showing up? And practicing gratitude is a great part of this because focusing on gratitude and what there's so much that we have to be grateful for. And if you're sitting there thinking, well, I really haven't got anything to be grateful for, the fact that you're here now listening, the fact that you woke up this morning, the fact that you were able to sleep last night, that you have a roof over your head, that you have a bed to sleep in, you've got running water. These are all things we have to be grateful for. They don't have to be huge, great things. They don't have to be dramatic. It can be simply our day to day things that we are grateful for. So spending time practicing your gratitude and doing this as well by writing it down. 
with pen and paper because um, there's evidence and research that's shown that when we write things down by hand, it tends there's there's um, a connection with the brain in terms of it in, in internalizes in a more effective way if we write it rather than typing it. So writing down maybe three gratitudes of that and really feeling into those gratitudes is really, really powerful. And it will start to help you to reprogram your neural pathways, which have, at, at least at the moment, habitually been focusing on the what's gone wrong, what I don't have, what's not going well, et cetera, et cetera, all of those things so that are causing you the anger, resentment, the stress, being unhappy, being frustrated, being in a bad place. So the neural pathways now keeps going in that direction. What we want to do is to shift it to a more positive outlook, a more positive direction. So it shifts the lens that we see the world through. I do hope this is making sense. If you do have any questions on this, please pop them in the comments and I will come back to you here live if they come through before um, we end or I will pop back and answer them for you. And if you have any questions you'd rather ask me directly, then do pop them um, on a direct message to me. I'll be more than happy to have a conversation with you. So I do hope this has made sense for you and it's given you something to think about and also to work with um, because naturally we tend to focus on what's not going well, what went wrong, what's bad, what we don't have and we will attract more of the same. So by becoming aware of the emotions that we're having and what's creating that, which is typically what we are focusing on, we can shift our focus to things that make us happy. So starting with gratitude, thinking about what is it you can do differently and becoming aware of how you are showing up that is perhaps not serving you. So going back to my example of um, being in the job market, wanting to secure that next role, showing up at interview and maybe even just going for any job that you can, showing up and hoping against hope that you will get that job because pure desperation is not going to bode well for you and people will smell it, they will pick it up, they will sense it, that you're not really committed, you're just wanting a job. So slow down, tune into being present with yourself, with your emotions, your thoughts and what you are focusing on and take on board some of the things that I've shared today, the strategies and particularly the gratitude to start reprogramming your neural pathway so you can focus on all the good that you have and by doing so you will create even more and things will look even better than they are right now so when i said at the start that actually i will share some tips with you that you can embrace that you can wake up tomorrow feeling even better than you are today if you are struggling right now if you're in a bad place then please do take this on board and by all means practices, practice these, these habits, these rituals, and message me. Let me know how you're getting on. Thank you for joining me today. I do hope this has been insightful and it has been useful for you. And as always, drop me any questions and comments and I will come back to you or message me directly if you prefer. And until next time, Remember to build your influence, make an impact and be remembered for the right reasons by showing up as the best version of yourself. And if you haven't already done so, now is the time to click on the link in the comments that Sharon Gruta has popped in there. One is for the playbook, so go ahead and register for your copy if you haven't already done so. And it will share with you some strategies and techniques that you can take on board and implement immediately to show up as the best version of you. And also, please do subscribe to my YouTube channel, which has recently launched and has um, episodes of all of my podcast interviews that I've had with some incredible, inspiring and amazing leaders in the tech industry. And there's so much learnings and takeaways that you will gain from listening to those, as well as all of the episodes from my lives. Thank you so much for being here today and thank you for your ongoing support. And I look forward to seeing you same time, same place next week. Take care and enjoy the rest of the week.